Being a World Heritage Site means that this particular cultural property or natural property possess this particular element we call outstanding universal value, which means it is the historical or the cultural significance of a particular property that transcends national boundaries. In other words, it is important globally. globally. First, we have to verify if there are similar things to it in other parts of the world because every World Heritage Site is unique in its own so there should be nothing like it in other parts of the world. There are three other things that you have to consider uh, in being a World Heritage Site. First, it must be authentic. So when you see these churches, you can see that the architecture, the structure itself is more than 90% uh, authentic because um, you, it is a representation of a certain period of our history when uh, many parts of the islands of the Philippines were already constructing churches. So the materials has to be re uh, have to be representative of that particular period of time, as well as the engineering and the architectural uh, works in the church. Then integrity. Nothing in the parts of the church is lost in case something has been has deteriorated already, it could be restored or it could be renovated or reconstructed given uh, certain dimensions for documentation. And of course, the management requirements. Uh, these church have to be, these churches have to be coupled with uh, legislative actions such as um, local ordinances, and then national laws and then policies because they have to be protected. Because uh, at the end of the day, the very statement of the World Heritage uh, property is it must be preserved for the benefit of all humanity. The benefit really is in the marketing because it, uh, it is an unwritten law, unwritten policy that as far as any country is concerned, the foremost tourist attractions in that country are its World Heritage Sites. So naturally, the tourism income are expectedly high in these uh, areas. So that's the positive uh, benefit. The state, the NCCA in particular, has to allot money for the continuous See, preservation of these uh, sites. Because that's also incumbent upon the role of the NCCA to take charge, to take care of the intangible cultural heritage in a particular heritage site. Because it is our principle that it is the intangible that defines the tangible. It's the culture of the community that gives, that gave rise to a certain heritage structure. So we document also the intangible properties of a heritage site.